Well, hello guys. Today, we are gonna be taking a look at the brand new Guggen Squad Micro Banger, Micro Recon, and Micro Clutch. Coming in at $8 a piece. We're gonna see whether these baits are worth it or if I think they're a rip off. All right, let's jump into the review here. I'm not gonna lie, when I heard that these baits were gonna be priced at $8 a piece, I was like, eh, that seems a little bit pricey to be honest. And at first I was like, if, it, if it's smaller, it requires less materials to make, shouldn't it be less expensive? Now, I don't know if that is truly the case based on the research that I've done. In order to determine whether these baits are worth it, we're gonna have to go through a couple different criteria. Number one, we're going to open it up, test out the underwater action, and we're going to look at the quality of the components that build these baits into are made out of whatever. Number two, we are going to compare them. Hold on, I got to unhook these for myself. We're going to compare them to some similar baits in their range, which are uh, these micro baits. You know, we got the uh, tiny... Bill Lewis original rattle trap. We've got the Rapala countdown minnow in an eighth of an ounce. This is a classic bait. And then we've got this guy, which is uh, about the same size as my Guggen baits right here, but I don't really know what brand it is. I'm guessing this is a Strike King based on the eye pattern right there. So let's jump into this test. And first off, we are going to compare the Micro Clutch to the Bill Lewis Fire Tiger tiny trap right here comparison number one let's hold these little guys side by side and as you can see they're about the same length they each weigh an eighth of an ounce and their price points are actually very similar this guy coming in at seven dollars 79 cents and this one coming in at seven dollars 99 cents but if you're a carl's member get it from carl's bait and tackle you can actually get a 30 percent discount when you're a member and if you want to order your first ever baits from carl's you can get ten dollars off using my promo code one rod 10 you'll be supporting my channel so if you guys are looking to buy these baits or anything else from carl's use that discount code save a little bit of money and right off the bat what i like to look at when i'm comparing two different baits is i like to look at the quality of the hooks and this one as you can see has two different hooks the uh this one i had to put on because it was missing a hook this is the original hook that came on this bait right here the silver one and if i look at it it actually looks pretty reasonably decent i'm going to test the sharpness not the sharpest but it's not bad it makes a little tiny scratch on my fingernail now i'm going to see the strength of the hook by bending it this is actually this is no doubt a quality hook on this bait definitely nothing wrong with the components on this particular bait right here seems to be pretty good now we're going to look at the guggen bait right here it's got the reflective pattern right here. It's got the Guggen Squad logo for the eye, which I always think is pretty cool. Now we're gonna look at the quality of the hooks. I can already tell you these hooks are no joke. These are triple grips right here. Very small, very sharp, quite thin. Now these are excellent at hooking the fish, but if we look at the bend of the hook right here, I can actually move it a teeny tiny bit with my fingers. So in terms of strength, this hook is probably a little bit stronger but this hook without a doubt is going to be significantly sharper and in my opinion it's probably going to offer a better hookup ratio i believe they both have rattles that's the bill lewis rattle kind of a one knocker type sound here's the guggen the guggen has some small more rattles and smaller rattles producing a little different of a sound now that just comes down to the angler's preference i don't think one is better than the other but Let's throw these underwater and I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm just gonna show you guys the underwater footage straight up and you guys can be the judge of what you think of the action.
that was the action of the baits. Now we're going to take a look at the Rapala Countdown Minnow versus the Micro Banger. I like the sound of that. Now for these baits right here, we already know the hooks are going to be the same on this bait, same components, and it's going to have on the bottom, it tells you how deep it's going to dive. Now this bait is going to be a little different. This one is coming in at $10.99. Quite expensive. One reason is because Rapala is a big brand name. Another reason is this, this bait is actually made of balsa wood. Now balsa is going to have different action than plastic, which is what most baits are made out of. I don't necessarily think that balsa wood is superior than plastic, but if I had to say there's only one bait that needs to be made out of wood, and that was in one of my very recent videos. In my opinion, plastic baits do just fine. Now we look at the quality of the hooks on the Countdown Minnow right here, which is really an industry standard for a micro bait. I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is one of the original micro crankbaits, this guy right here. I could be wrong, let me know in the comments down below. But looking at these hooks right here, they look quite sharp. I'm gonna test the sharpness on my fingernail and they look to be plenty sharp, no issues there. I'm gonna try to bend it. Okay, so I do have an issue. These hooks are so thin that I'm actually able to bend them with my finger very easily. So say I hook a big fish and I'm fighting it, it might have the ability to straighten the hook out and bend it out of his mouth if my drag is not set correctly or if I'm fighting it in heavy current, something like that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the action of these two baits right here. All right, that was pretty interesting. Now it's time for the final comparison, the Mini Recon versus Crankbait X, which like I said, is probably a Strike King. Now looking at these baits side by side, they are about the same length if you measure it tip to tip. And uh, let's take a look at the quality of these hooks. These hooks look pretty strong, just looking at them right off the bat. Uh, I'm gonna test the sharpness, very sharp, no problems there. And actually these are not the strongest hooks, I'm able to bend the wire a decent bit, not as much as the Rapala, but this is definitely a little bit bendy. I'm just gonna check the quality of this triple grip on here real quick. And yeah, I mean, I'd say the bend, you know what, the bend on both these hooks are probably about the same. And if I'm correct, and that this is a striking, it's very likely that both these baits are using Mustad hooks. These are triple grips. These are probably the Mustad original round bend. And actually, if you look really close, right here side by side. The hooks look to be very similar, like they're made in the same factory. So I guess we gotta call that a wash. Let's take a look at the action underwater right now. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna fish one hour with each of the new Guggen micro baits, starting with the one I'm most excited to fish, which is gonna be the Mini Recon. And I'm gonna end with the one that I'm least excited to fish, which is gonna be the Mini Clutch. So we're gonna tie this on, get started, and uh, hopefully catch some big fish out of here. All right, let's see what we're dealing with today, guys. Uh, 
not too shabby. No one's swimming in the pool, which is very good. That means I will be able to make a few casts right here. Water's looking ultra clear, absolutely beautiful. Let's cast it out. See if we can do some damage right off the bat. Slow, steady retrieve is gonna be what works best, I think. So we're gonna start with that. Oh, right, second cast, woo! That is nuts, dude. This guy hit it like a ton of bricks, but it is an emaciated little bass. All right, these are the guys that'll get you. So you wanna handle them very carefully. I got them with both treble hooks right here. Well, nothing to write home about, but you know, I'm fishing my BFS gear and first time ever throwing these micro crankbaits. Ah, feels good, man. Ah, man, sharp. Sharp spines on this guy, what the heck? Bro, chill. So, right off the bat, this guy has some really sharp gill plates. I didn't know smallmouth usually have that. It's kind of weird. And if you look at his teeth, ultra sharp gripper teeth. I mean, that's gonna indicate he has a diet high in fish, lower in crustaceans. See ya, buddy. Watch him come off. Wow, lots of energy. So it would appear that even with the people swimming right above, there is no problems getting bit. I mean, I'm just casting in the prime zone under the falls, slow, steady retrieve. And in theory, you know, the fish should be stacked right under the current waiting for stuff to get washed in. Oh, big bite, big bite. How he missed it, I have no clue. That was a significantly bigger hit right there. Again, right under the falls. And so far, this bait has been performing flawlessly. Hooks have not been catching the line or each other. That's one thing I look at for small baits. You don't want the hooks to touch each other. So this one is designed well that the hooks will not ever catch itself. And it also is not catching the line. So I'm being very efficient with my casting and I'm having no issues just bombing it out there. I mean, I'm almost casting my entire spool of line out. This is good. This is real good. Should not be long before we get another hit. Oh, there's a good one. First cast, baby. Well, first cast since I took some underwater footage. Just took some underwater for you guys to see all the lures. And oh, this is a better one. This is a better fish. This one's actually putting up a fight on the BFS. And we've got a lot of thunder and lightning, guys. I don't know what it is about the weather, but every time I go out fishing, we are getting freaking smacked. This one is a healthy fish. Got him barely on one treble hook. So we're gonna play this fish carefully and make sure that we land him. In fact, I'm just gonna do the old land flip right here to slowly get him onto the bank right here. Look at that, beautiful specimen right here. Dude, this guy has been caught like 10 times. Look at this fish right here. His entire upper left lip has been completely destroyed, not by me, by someone else. So this guy has definitely been caught at least once. Beautiful coloration on him, absolutely gorgeous. Probably about seven or eight inches, a little bit fatter, and put up a real nice fight. All right, my tiny friend, I will see you later. Now, what I've seen so far is that this bait excels fishing ultra slow. You can fish it as slow as you want, and the action is gonna be beautiful. But in heavy current, or if you try to fish it too fast, then sometimes the bait is gonna roll a little bit too much and ruin the action. So, so far, oh, oh, that's another hit. Another real nice hit. So I, think these, I think these fish, oh, oh. Dude, these fish are getting turned on right here. All right, we gotta make a few more casts of this bait and we'll switch it up to the Leo Special. No way, dude. No way. Just pulled out another little dinker from this little pool in these massive falls. 
Now, guys, these smallies are some of the smallest smallmouth I have ever seen in my life. But a fish is a fish. We will take what we can get. All right, little buddy, let's put you back where you came from. Let's try the pink lure out here and see if these little smallies want to get real aggressive. Woo, rumbling out there. We've got the pink mini banger on. We're gonna see if we can channel our inner EPF and land a creek monster. All right, so here's the deal. The pink banger did zero damage for me. So now I'm gonna use the mini clutch. We've got some lightning. We've got a lot of thunder. We're in waterproof mode. So this might not be my best and smartest idea, but I'm gonna go ham, try to get out deep and fish where no fisherman has gone before. Let's see what I catch. No freaking way. This is what I get for risking my life going chest deep in the water. I mean, I feel like it's kind of impressive to hook one of these in the mouth on a freaking lipless crankbait. This is like a three and a half inch sunfish right here. Fair to nothing, we'll take it. All right, little friend, I'm gonna let you go shallow. Show me how you can swim. Oh, off he goes. All right, one more fish, and then we might have to call it a day because I don't want to get electrocuted. All right, come on. I'm literally going where no fisherman has gone before. I promise you, no fisherman uh, has gone out this deep and fished this area of the river before. I mean, we are in... Oh, oh, we got one for a next cast. What is it? This might be a bit. Oh, it got off here with a little bass. See, that's what I tell I'm telling you guys. I mean, look where I'm fishing. I'm literally chest deep in the water. And I am throwing my lure where these fish that live there have never seen one. I can promise you that. Last fish of the day. I mean, if I was a fish tank type of guy, I would be taking this in. In fact, actually I do have a fish tank. It's a pretty big one. I just have not set it up since I've moved to my new place. But that will be a video for another time. And well, these micro baits are definitely slaying these uh, little creek guys. They're feisty, but not much size to them. See ya. All right, let's review real quick. I went over the mini recon, got a lot of bites on it. It performed very well, but only really worked well at slow retrieve speeds. Now the mini banger right here worked well at slow speeds and medium speeds. Again, fast speeds did not work very well. The bait would roll over a little bit if I went too quickly. Then finally we got the mini clutch. This one worked best at medium speeds or fast speeds. And it worked amazing when you yo-yoed it off the bottom. It had a real beautiful shimmying action on the way down. These are gonna do really well in small creeks, rivers, small ponds, etc. If you guys are trying to just get on a variety of multi-species, these guys will probably do you very good. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I am sponsored and I am asked sometimes to show these baits in a video, fish with them, but I'm always asked to give my honest opinion on these baits. That's why I went over the flaws of the baits as well as the strength of the baits. No bait is perfect in my opinion. Every bait has a place in my tackle box at one point or another. I mean, I've caught fish on lettuce. I've caught fish on Twizzlers. I've caught fish on appendage shaped lures. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you can really catch fish on anything. Now, are those ideal baits? Not really, but when I'm trying to fish for real and I'm trying to put big fish and as many of them in my boat 
as possible if I had a boat then that's when I turn to baits like these or other baits that I like so guys we are gonna call it a day right there thank you so much for watching I'll be fishing with these micro baits in the future experimenting with them to see what their limits truly are but until then I'll catch you guys later peace Thank you.